Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you some advanced mixer techniques on the mixer in FL Studio. If you're brand new to it, check out this video here. It's a sort of beginner guide to the mixer to get you up to speed. But for now, let's just get right into it. So before I start, I'm just going to go over a little bit of familiarization. Uh, I've got mine set to wide so you can change your view to get it to look the same as mine for this tutorial if you want. And also I have my effects chain on the left hand side of the mixer. That's how I prefer it, but you can change it in this menu here, view, track inspector on left hand side. I prefer it on the left. Cool, so now that we've covered that, these are the sort of tips that I use in a lot of my tutorials, uh, but I don't always slow down to explain exactly what I'm doing just to keep the tutorials quick. So in this video, I'm gonna try and keep moving it quick, but I'm gonna show you as many of them as I can. It's probably about nine or 10. And all of the shortcuts and tips are written in the description so that you don't have to take note of absolutely everything. So the first one's pretty simple. If you're selecting one track, you know, you can just click on it with a left click or move the arrow keys left and right. But to select multiple tracks, we can hold Control and Shift and then select with a left click whichever ones we want. And then we can you know, move all of their faders together. This is a really cool utility. Or a quicker way is to just hold down control and left click and drag across the tracks you want. And then you can move them all together or you can side chain and send them. So you can you know, right click down here, route to this track and then they've all been sent there together. Saves me a lot of time. If I just play a little bit of audio, it also helps because if you're selecting multiple tracks and you can adjust the volume of them together, instead of having to like sort of go backwards and forwards between them like this and try to level them out perfectly. I try to keep my mixer really organized by using these separators. So on a track, I can right click and add these separators here. And on the topic of selecting everything together, you can also move everything together. So say I have all of these selected, I can hold Alt and just move them left and right just like this and it moves the entire group, which you've probably seen me do and that kind of confuses people. And another one is often I go over to the side and I like pull in a clean channel. So I just do this and you just see me drag a new channel in to use. And everybody asks, how, how are you moving that? And it is really straightforward. Select a channel, hold shift, and then scroll using the scroll wheel of your mouse and it will move it side, sideways like this. If you don't have a mouse, say you're on a laptop, you can just select the track, hold alt and use the left and right arrow keys to move it in like this, simple. The next technique is just a better way to solo your tracks. So if I play some audio, you'll know that you can just uh, right click on these on the mute button here and it will solo a track. So if I just mute that, so if I just solo that there, I can solo my guitars. However, there's better ways to solo. So say you have a track selected, you can just move the right and left arrow keys and just press the S key on your keyboard and it will just solo it. And I find this is easier when I'm working quickly. I don't have to keep clicking with my mouse. I can just sit back in the chair, listen on my monitors and solo and mute things as I want. However, soloing has a big downside in FL Studio and I'll show you right here. So if I play some audio and then solo my guitar bus, so this is where all my guitars are being sent to, nothing plays. And this is because they're all post fader sends, which I'll explain in just a minute. However, if I have this selected and I press Alt and S instead of just pressing S, everything sent to that channel will be soloed as well. Just an S would cut it down, Alt and S, perfect. And although that's a great way to solo everything sent to a track, if you actually want to select the tracks that are sent to it, simple, Control, Alt and L, and it will select the tracks that are sent to it. Sometimes my routing can get a little bit complicated and sometimes I just look at a, a reverb here and I'm like, what is being sent to this reverb? So all I have to do is press Control Alt L and it will show me the tracks that I've decided to send to that reverb. It's just, it simplifies my workflow because it's so easy to get confused. And on the topic of sends, this is time to talk about pre and post fader sends in FL Studio, which I'm asked about seemingly every single video, someone, someone mentions it. So in typically in FL Studio, say I have a guitar channel here, I'll just play it. If I send to a reverb and this here, this track here is my reverb guitar verb space. If I send to the reverb, I typically go down here, right click and select route to this track. Now if I press play, you can hear there's all this reverb added to the guitar. Now that's great nine times out of 10. However, if I wanna hear that reverb on its own, say I solo the reverb, I don't hear anything. And this is because the audio hits, is going through this guitar channel here, goes through the effects, hits the fader and then is sent. But if I mute it, nothing is sent to the reverb. So this is called a post fader send. It goes through all of this stuff, through the fader and then out. I've oversimplified it, but that means that if I mute it, I don't hear my reverb. 
which can be problematic. So what I'm going to do is remove this link and I'm going to add a plugin called Fruity Send. So it's in the gain section, Fruity Send, just like that. Then on my guitar track, I'm going to right click and select sidechain to this track. So there's no audio being sent to here, it's just a sidechain. I'm going to use this send plugin to send the audio. So with Fruity Send selected, I right click here, guitar verb space, that's my reverb send. And then I can choose the amount to send to this reverb and the pan. Just like this. And what this means is that the audio goes through this effects chain and when it hits the Fruity Send plugin, it bypasses this mute and the fader and it just goes straight to the reverb. So what I can do is I can mute my original guitar signal and still hear the reverb. Just like this. And this is great when you're sort of getting used to it because you can just load up plugins and really manipulate that reverb without having to hear the guitar clashing on top. If I play the guitar as well, sometimes that can be a bit confusing to understand like what's going on. Now, when I mix, I like to mix with everything in context, but when I was starting out, it was useful sometimes to solo tracks, not often, but just sometimes to solo them and really be able to hear what the reverbs were doing and how it was interacting with the track. So this is great, but it's great for another reason. And this is that sometimes, say I want to add reverb to a distorted electric guitar track. Sometimes I want the reverb to be clean. So what I can do is you can add the Fruity Send plugin early on in the effects chain and it will send a clean version to the reverb. Then you can distort the dry guitar as much as you want and you can have a clean reverb, which gives this really nice contrast in a track. Whereas if you're using the post fader send, just the typical send to this track, route to this track, it's only it's gonna send a really distorted, dirty signal to the reverb, which could also be what you want, but it just depends on the context of the mix and the track. And something else I'm asked in every single video is how do you move the effects up and down on the effects chain like this? It's really, really straightforward. Hover over the effect with your cursor. Don't hit a hotkey and just scroll with the mouse just like this, just to move it up and down. If you don't have a mouse, you can click here and move up and down just like this. But um, most of us are probably producing with a mouse, I think. So just scroll up and down really, really straightforward. Say I've got this left and right guitar here and I've set my processing up perfectly for the left guitar and I want to copy it over and have it on another channel for the right hand side guitar. I could copy all my effects individually or what you can do is just right click, select file, save mixer track state as, you'll see that it's just kind of hovering here. I've, I've left click and held my cursor down and then I drop it on top of the next track and it copies absolutely everything. So it's guitar left, I can rename it just by middle clicking. This is a really quick way to rename and color. Middle click on your mouse, so on the scroll wheel. Maybe I wanna call that guitar right. And now I can just have the exact same effect, just pan it to the other side and I've copied my effects. I'd still probably wanna balance it slightly differently, but it's just a really quick way, saves you having to load up all those plugins. However, if you want to be a little bit more precise with it, say you have a perfect reverb on something, like I love this reverb that I've got on this melody here, right? And I wanna copy that reverb across to a different track. I can simply select the effect by left clicking on this little drop down here, save preset as, click and drag with a left click, and I can just drop only that effect onto the next channel. And as you can see, the effect is loaded up on that channel there. Now, if for some reason you've, you've messed up some tracks, you just want to set them back to default, it's really straightforward. Just select however many tracks you want. I'm just going to press Control and left click and select these ones. Right click, reset selected tracks to default. Just like that, it's reset those back to gray. However, it hasn't changed the side chaining. So you'll have to remember to turn all of those off yourself. Now if you'll remember back two weeks I made that video about the Edison plugin which I love and I use it for recording audio, sound design and whatnot. Uh, there's a few really useful ways to use the Edison in the mixer, specifically how to load it up. So say I'm recording into this left channel here, you can quickly load an Edison by just pressing Control and E and it will load it onto that track. Or an even better way if you're really in the flow of a recording is to press Shift and E and this will open it up already recording on play. So say I want to print out this left guitar, just a little bit of it for some creative effect. I can just uh, press Shift and E, and then just press play. And it's just already recording, just as quick as that. 
And then, you know, maybe from here, I just want to select a little section, reverse it, add some reverb to it, do some kind of effect like that. It just speeds up the workflow a little bit. And the final tip is about this current channel, which is a little bit elusive. Um, it seems that a lot of people don't quite understand it. What this is, is a track that you can load up effects or analyzers onto, and it shows uh, the DB volume of the track you currently have selected. So if I play everything, the track I have selected, its DB value will play on the current track and whatever effects I have loaded on the current track will be running through it as well. So my left guitar is like this, my right guitar is like this, my melody. And what I like to do on the current track is have an analyzer like Span or Wave Candy open all the time. So say you're mixing kick and bass, instead of loading Span on all of your tracks and like killing your CPU, not that it's a heavy plugin, you can just, you know, load it on the current track switch between your kick and your bass, and you can see what they're doing, how they're interacting with each other, nice and simple like that. So that's all of those tips for now. If you have any more that you think I've missed, just write them down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear them. And uh, I hope that's been helpful. Hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.